welcome to today's session okay, let me just take this out yeah welcome everyone uh, to today's session on automation studio so i know some of you have been in attending some of the previous sessions uh, some of you may probably be new to it i hope you can catch up with the recordings from the previous so that it makes sense for you because it's a series of um, you know sessions uh, and should go like you know, in the order like you, know, you look at the intro then you look at uh, the email config part and then you're getting into marketing automation so i believe jolson already covered uh, journey builder um, i think probably last week or before that so uh, unfortunately i was not well so we were supposed to like you know get that on the same weekend um, so hopefully let, yeah, let's at least go through it today um, so yeah amit already gave you intro about myself so i won't take too much time on here so we'll we'll uh, i want to keep this session a bit interactive okay um, because um, uh, like you know so uh, it's not one hour is not enough for us to like you know deep dive into automation studio as is with most of the things that we find in sfmc okay so we we have some youtube content that i will that i prepared as well that i will give you the link some of you may have seen it but if you those who have not seen it i will share the link at the, the playlist at the end so i've actually created uh, like you know details about each of the features in automation studio a while back uh, it still holds good like i don't think it's outdated and there are a few more videos that i plan to add as well so you can you can go through that um, later on but uh, in this session i'll try to give you a, a, at least a good overview so that you you get the basics about automation studio if you're new to it okay and then when you see the actual um, you know each of those uh, deep dives then it will make sense right? it's easy for you like and you can use that if you're actually working on the platform okay or if you're even for studying for the exam okay so um, i'll start with uh, uh, you know some few basic questions that i have as well um, so like i said i like I keep it interactive um, i want to know from you guys as well like you know what, what uh, you all heard the term marketing automation right so who can tell me what marketing automation is okay let me see where is the chat window go okay uh, even i have given the option to unmute themselves so they can directly go ahead and unmute them yeah. and start speaking if they want to speak Hey Shivu, hi everyone. I consider uh, marketing automation as an ETL tool. So uh, it uh, usually uh, goes ahead and help uh, in the segmentation of data. Okay, good. Any other thoughts? Yeah, hi Shivu, we are on this side. Yeah. So I would consider marketing automation as like any external data which to deserialize or serialize from FTPs or any other systems. Okay. You can use uh, automation studio okay okay yeah i mean the question is not uh, what automation studio is my question was more of um, just to repeat for some of you who did not hear it what is your understanding about marketing automation in general i'm sure many of you have heard that term right so yeah uh, automation think... is nothing but uh, like reducing the manpower like human work so coming to this marketing automation means like a repetitive tasks hmm. uh, regarding this marketing everything will be done by automation itself okay 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 cool and lakshmi you are saying something yeah uh, i think automation studio helps us to schedule or trigger some set of or series of activities using default or standard elements in marketing cloud okay okay yeah all of yeah. you all of you have have the right uh, like you know notion about like marketing automation so in in very simple terms like the name suggests itself like you know and, and many of you refer to the same thing as well um, so it is just a, a set of tools or features that is available in a platform like at least a marketing platform which allows you to like you know automate certain repetitive tasks especially in marketing right when you say marketing automation it is specific for marketing right so uh, you always want to like you know uh, improve your productivity and then you want to like you know minimize the manual labor wherever possible that's why like you know it is important to have marketing automation now in in this i i believe some of you probably have worked on salesforce crm side as well right so what are some of the automation features that you have come across in regular crm sales cloud like flows and ah uh, flows like process yes. builders workflow process rules builders. lead assignments okay. yeah See, there are there are a lot of stuff. I would say even triggers also you can consider as automation. Like you have written it once, it will automatically trigger, right? So it is not only just low code. Anything that actually helps you, like you know, so you, they can all be considered as like you know automation, uh, uh, you know, process that you can build in. Okay. So within marketing cloud, 
uh, this particular marketing automation uh, that actually helps you is uh, this tool is called Automation Studio. Okay. Now, uh, some of you probably have learned Journey Builder from the previous session. So, in under Marketing Cloud, uh, sorry, in Marketing Cloud, you will come across Automation Studio and Journey Builder quite a lot. Uh, and then sometimes I, I've seen people ask me the question, okay, what is the difference between the two as well, right? So marketing automation, like, uh, like sorry, automation studio, like I said, it's specifically for you to like, you know, uh, overcome some of these repetitive tasks, uh, how to make it like, you know, scheduled or, or, or triggered or things like that, right? Journey builder, it's, it's more of like, you know, interacting on a one-on-one -on -one basis with a customer, okay, or a contact, okay? So that is what it's used for. And you, you have uh, options to do it uh, to different channels that are available for your uh, or okay and you can reach out through like email you uh, sms push notification um, you know even whatsapp is now uh, re recently available as well so there are different options that you can reach out to even even ad studio audiences etc okay so that is journey builder so don't get confused between the two and then okay what is both used for they both have like you know uh, certain features of marketing automation right because the journey also helps with marketing automation but it, it is specifically for that one to one communication with the with the uh, the contact okay this automation studio also has options to like you know you know reach out to uh, contacts but you you will see in the next uh, like you know one hour how it is actually like you know that what are the different types of you know things that you can actually automate in automation studio okay so uh when you uh, okay let me just look at this one okay so automation studio on a high level, it's, it's actually very simple. You just need to remember three components in it. Okay. Uh, the first one is like, it's, it's a workflow. Okay. So you're familiar with workflows. It is nothing but a, a flow of like, you know, of a different activities or steps. Okay. So it can contain one or more activities or steps and each workflow must have one entry source or a starting point. Okay. And then you can, along with that, you can use one or more activities in serial or in parallel. Okay, and we will see that we will see that in the in the next few uh, session uh, in the slides that we see. Um, like you, you will, after we look at the activities, you will see like you know how you can actually like you know uh, schedule them. Okay, so um, some of the common activities that we have in Automation Studio I've mentioned here, and we will go through these a uh, little more in detail as well. Okay, so let me show you how it looks like. I hope you can all see my org marketing yes. cloud dashboard. Yeah. Okay. Great. So this is the marketing cloud dashboard and then where you will find automation studio is under the journey builder menu. Okay. There is no specific automation studio uh, menu here. It's under journey builder. Okay. You will you'll see both journey builder and automation studio. And then when you come into automation studio, you will see two tabs overviews and activities. So overview is where you will go and then create a new automation. So once you click on new automation, it is just like how you build open up your flow builder or a, your process builder, everything like that. It, it's a, it's a, it's a canvas where you can actually build that particular automation, right? So in the workflow tab, you will see like, you can, you can just drag and drop in stuff. Like you can drag like this. Okay. And you can just uh, delete. You can, uh, if you drag an activity here, you can just drag and drop all these things and you can configure, you can actually do multiple ones. Okay. So we'll, we'll look at each of these uh, shortly. Okay. So just to give you an idea of how the interface looks like. Okay. So this is your uh, automation workflow, like, you know, canvas where you build automations. Okay. All right. So going back to our PowerPoint. Um, so we'll look at each of these components in detail. And the first one, uh, like, like I said, within a workflow, the first important one that we need is an entry source. Okay. So the first in the entry source is a uh, scheduled um, entry source or scheduled starting point. Okay. And as the name says, you can actually schedule it to run the workflow at specific intervals or even just once. Okay. It's not like it has, to, it has to continually run. Sometimes you want to schedule just for once and then just end it. Right. So for that particular um, uh, option, this is very useful. Okay. Uh, guys, if you, okay. Uh, Amit, can we turn off annotation? Wait, hold on. Uh, okay. So let me go back to our this one here. So as you can see here, this is the scheduled uh, starting source. And if I just drag in uh, into this particular workflow, I can say like, you know, I want this workflow to start uh, you, based on a schedule. Okay. I can click on configure and then I can give a specific date. Okay. What date do I want it to start? What time? Okay. It'll, it's a range of time as well, based on the time zone that you give. And then I can choose the options. Very simple. You have, most of you are very familiar with these kind of, you know, configurations. Like, you know, if I choose just none means it will only run once. Okay. Otherwise I can do either hourly, daily, week, days, 
weekly monthly yearly i can i can specify that and then i can schedule it as well okay very straight forward right so the second one that that you will see besides scheduled sorry uh, besides scheduled is file drop okay this used to be known as um, um, like you no know, triggered uh, entry source like earlier but now it's called file drop now this triggers the workflow to start when when a particular file is dropped into a specific folder in the marketing clouds enhanced ftp okay now those of you who are not familiar with uh, what that concept is about enhanced ftp it's like every uh, business unit in uh, marketing cloud it has an enhanced ftp site okay associated with it and, and you will the admins will get the credentials for that as well okay so it's a, it's a unique um, you know ftp site uh, secure ftp that's been given to like you know each of the business units and then you can create folders within it for uh, importing and exporting files to and fro between marketing cloud and other systems okay now this entry source is very useful like uh, especially when you are um, sh- you're not sure when the source file will be like you know getting dropped into your ftp so let's say some sometimes you can even do it through scheduled as well like you know you can say okay every day morning 4 o'clock uh, run the job right so you will expect the file to be dropped into the ftp before maybe 3 am or something in that case you can schedule it but sometimes like you know you might have a case like no no i don't want to like you no know, schedule like that i'm not sure when they will drop it they may drop it any time and i want to like you know uh, run the uh, the automation immediately after that particular file gets dropped in sometimes it could be like you know multiple times a day i might get a file feed maybe five times a day as soon as the file comes in i want that particular automation to kick off so use cases can vary okay so you have to check like you know when do you think it is applicable when you should you use scheduled or should you use file drop as well okay so uh, let me show you the file drop one as well let me take this out and drag this in if i click on here so you will see this is our uh, the ftp specifically that is associated with this particular bu that i have okay so i have uh, import folder and i have like you know triggered automations and i have two other folders here then what you will see is like you will see two options here called no file name pattern and uh, use file name pattern so if you use no file name pattern it means you can drop any file into a specified folder and it will trigger the automation okay and um, uh, also that folder can then be used only by that one automation like let's say for this particular automation if i am using this particular folder here called triggered automations then and i'm using no file name pattern it will get locked for this particular automation that i'm configuring meaning i cannot use that folder for any other automations plus uh, no other patterns or anything can i apply on that anymore okay because it doesn't know like okay it, it doesn't look for any specific pattern any file that gets dropped into this particular folder immediately it will kick off this particular automation okay that's what it does if you're using file name pattern so file name pattern is nothing but like you can actually like you know specify contains begin with and ends with and you can give a string okay uh, it will search for that particular uh, string in the file name okay excluding the extension and if a file name uh, a file is matching that particular search criteria uh, and that is the one that gets dropped into the particular the folder that you choose uh, it will kick off the automation so one thing that you have to note is that you can have multiple automations to use this uh, the same folder because it is based on a pattern and and you can also have multiple automations also like you know triggering from the same file being dropped if you use the file name pattern meaning right now this is one automation that i'm configuring right i can create another two three automations also using the same file name pattern folder as well okay so if i go to this particular folder here you will see there's an i icon here right so here what this means is if i'm trying to i can uh, this folder is already having three other file name patterns uh, being used by couple of other automations that you can see there okay so you will see like you know there are three different automations that are using file name patterns on this folder i can create the fourth one here if i use that okay but if i use file no file name pattern you will see this becomes locked means i cannot select this folder so that's what it actually has. so there are certain restrictions like you know on how you can use this you can play around with it to figure that out uh, ideally if you know okay that you know uh, there is a specific pattern in which like you are expecting the file to come in like maybe the file is always known as orders or something or customer details something like that you can give that particular contains begin with ends with that string over here and then you can you can uh, use that for like triggering the the particular the automation okay one thing to note uh, you do not have the option to give wild cards and all that over here okay so there are file name patterns references here you can see that uh, like you know in the documentation if you google it you will see like a, uh, what contains means what is the example for begins with and what ends with this okay so you have to be very careful on how you use it um, like you know because 
there is file name patterns with wildcards being used in activities not in the file drop entry source people usually confuse that okay people think you can put percentage percentage and then you know year and date and all you can put that wildcards you cannot use that here okay all right uh, so that is on the file drop part so let me go back to our slides okay so before we get into now now we just saw the two uh, entry sources right so now we have to look at activities but before we look into activities we need to know more about file locations in marketing cloud okay so this is an option that is available in setup and is very useful when you are dealing with uh, you know file based operations now the reason why this is important is if you don't configure the locations here uh, you won't be able to refer them later in the automation activities okay so let me go back to here and then in setup so you can see here there are multiple uh, you know file locations that i have configured in my admin section okay the if you have marketing connect to you know to salesforce uh, already like a crm if you have connected this particular bu you will get the option of salesforce objects and reports meaning if there is any specific uh, you know salesforce objects or reports that i want to like you know uh, pull from from that uh, particular in an activity if i want to pull uh, you know accounts and you know any objects or reports all those things i can actually like you know use this particular location and it will automatically go and you know look at the the objects and the and its, it's uh, records and everything in that particular salesforce instance that is connected to this bu okay sometimes it is useful it's not always like you know, that you will be using this option okay then you have the option to like you know uh, like i said uh, sfmc has an enhanced ftp okay so it's always called enhanced ftp exact target enhanced ftp or like because exact target is the old uh, sfmc so uh, usually when when they uh, when anybody says enhanced ftp it is referring to the sfmc ftp folder okay uh, you they usually it will have the import folder and it will also have the export folder so these two are like you know default two folders that you will get in each of the ftp uh, sites that are created in sfmc each of the bus will have that and you can use those default you can even create additional folders subfolders and all that for in this particular case i have created a subfolder here like you know and how you create is you you can go and create n number of locations i can create five different import folders i can create five different export folders all that i can do that okay so i can just go ahead and put some name here sorry what happened here okay i can put the whatever name i want to give here which so that i can refer to it and then i can select the the specific uh, okay what location is this particular name referring to okay so if i want to configure an external ftp site that is not enhanced ftp but maybe like an external U, uh, ftp that is from a customer has a different ftp where they are going to put a file they are not going to put it into our enhanced ftp i have to go and pick it from there then i can use this particular external ftp configuration okay what if that file is in amazon s3 okay so this is a very new uh, feature that was i think released uh, late last year so we are still you know exploring that there is some documentation that i'm looking through i have not worked completely on this i'm still exploring that once that is there i will definitely post a video on that but that option is also now available for salesforce as well okay uh, one important one that you need to know is safe house okay for those of you who do not know what safe house is it is actually a, a black box for most of us like you know who are working on the platform meaning uh, it is not exposed externally um to the outside world and even for you know, the actual ui from the ui uh, a particular sfmc user cannot access a safe house okay i cannot see what is inside the safe house okay uh, you, uh, the activities that we configure inside um, automation studio they can access safe house okay it can say like okay go put a file into safe house or go retrieve this particular file from safe house but i cannot go and see like okay show me the listing in safe house what are the files that are available there nothing those are all blocked for us okay uh, we will assume that file is over there if the automation before that or after that works okay so that is what that is what uh, you know we can use safe house for primarily it's more of a like a secure temporary storage area that sfmc uses which we can use in our automation which you will see shortly why we need that safe house okay so this is the concept that you have like you know you can create multiple file locations uh in your uh setup the reason why we are using this is because later on you will see when i'm showing you activities this names will actually show in the drop down of locations you need to specify and like suddenly if i if i select uh, external tidbits for you ftp in the drop down what it means is whatever i have configured here is saying okay go and find 
whatever the file that I need in this particular FTP that is configured here in this file location. That's what it means. So anything that you need to refer to as a specific location, either in enhanced FTP or an external FTP or Salesforce, wherever it is, you need to specify that particular location here. Okay. Otherwise you will not be able to use that in automation studio. Very, very important. Okay. Okay. Going now into activities. Uh, okay. So the first uh, most common activity that you will end up working with is file transfer activity. Okay. Now file transfer activity, there are two options that you can use with file transfer. One is inbound and one is outbound. Okay. Now I call it this way. Okay. So there are two diagrams here. Like you will see, I, I call it inbound and outbound, but Salesforce doesn't, you know, call it that way. They call it the inbound one. They call it as manage file. Okay. And the outbound one, they call it move file uh, from safe house. That's what they call it. Okay. So um, ensure like, you know, you know, the actual term that Salesforce uses, but uh, the reason I, I use inbound outbound is so that you understand, like, you know, what it actually refers to the flow of the particular workflow. Like if it's coming in into say marketing cloud, or if it's going out of marketing cloud. Okay. So inbound as the name suggests, okay. It is the, the flow is inward. Okay. Uh, uh, it's, it's like very straightforward. You can use this activity to like, you know, fetch a file from your enhanced FTP folder. Okay. Into your safe house. So let's say there is an external uh, company or a system that is actually going to like, you know, place an FTP, uh, sorry, a file on your FTP, enhanced FTP folder. Okay. You want to pull that into marketing cloud. Okay. So for that, you need to use file transfer. Okay. And then you, you need to use the manage file option within that. I'll show you shortly where you configure this. Okay. And when you do that, what it, what it tells SFMC is, okay, you have to go and pull that file from FTP. And then you have to say, where do I want to pull it into? It'll automatically pull it into safe house. Okay. Uh, by the way, yeah, you, you actually cannot specify, you cannot specify the target. It always pulls into safe house. Okay. So you can only specify where is the uh, source, meaning is, is it in uh, the enhanced FTP or is it on an external FTP that you configured or is it in Amazon S3, wherever it is, like, you know, from wherever it is, file transfer will always, and the inbound one will always go and pull that file and bring it into your safe house. Okay. Now this particular activity is very useful uh, because it will also uh, allow you to decrypt or uh, unzip or de uh, I would say like, you know, probably decompress. Okay. So sometimes or most of the times I would say like, you know, when people send files into FTP to make it more secure, because the data is like, you know, it will probably be public like otherwise, right? So uh, to make it more secure, they will usually encrypt it and sometimes even compress it. Okay. So for an example, like file.zip.pgp, so some PGP encryption, right? So uh, you cannot simply like, you know, import this data into uh, marketing cloud. Okay. You need to be able to like, you know, uh, extract the file that is within that particular, um, like, you know, the, uh, the zip or the PGP file. Like, right? So for that file transfer has an option to do both. It can unzip and or decrypt the file as well. And when you're decrypting it, you have the option to configure, right? There is key management uh, options within um, Marketing Cloud where you can go and, you know, uh, configure saying that, okay, use this particular key uh, to decrypt files. Like, you know, if it's coming from an external key, they will give you the public key. Uh, like, you know, whoever is going to like, you know, uh, encrypt this one, which you have to go and configure. So using that particular decryption technique, it will automatically decrypt and put that file in your safe house. Okay. So once it comes into safe house, you can then pull it into like, you know, marketing cloud using the next activity, which we'll talk about in a couple of slides from now. Okay. The outbound is the other way around. Okay. So let's say I want to send data from marketing cloud to an external system through FTP. Okay. In which case the file will come into a safe house and from safe house, the, I will, let's assume the file is in safe house using file transfer again, using the move file option. Okay. You can then say, okay, which file you want to move and then move from here to FTP folder. Okay. Or if you want to directly, you know, go into an external uh, FTP, not an enhanced FTP, but an external FTP or an Amazon S3, you can all do that. Like you can, you can configure that. Right. And this also, we will see if you, this particular option here, you cannot um, do um, zipping. Okay. So uh, like I said, the file that comes into safe house, usually will be the, uh, like a CSV or a text delimited file. Right. Uh, you, you can encrypt the file when you put it into uh, the enhanced FTP, but you cannot zip it. Okay. So there probably might be another process that you can actually do by like, you know, going and changing it, like in you know, a file thing, there is a file zip process or something. I need to check that one option, like how you can zip that. Okay. Yeah. Um, in one of my videos, I've actually mentioned how to go and do that additional zipping as well. Okay. 
uh, but just keep that in mind like you know you will have the checkbox to like you know do the en uh, encryption when you are moving the file from safe house to uh, the enhanced ftp folder on the outbound process okay okay so now let me show you quickly our automation studio so the starting source is here so how do i do a file transfer activity so i will just bring a file transfer activity just drag and drop here okay i can do choose i can go either choose one that was already existing there or i can go create a a uh, new file transfer activity and this see this is where i was saying you can either choose manage file or you can choose move a file from safe house it does not tell you inbound outbound or like you know over here like you know so uh, sometimes for the first time if you're looking at it you will get confused okay what does this actually mean i have no idea right which is why i'm saying you need to be familiar with what the terminologies mean manage file is nothing but the file is coming inside like you no know? and file transfer is like you know it'll 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 uh, it'll be you'll be able to configure it for both like you know so yeah, when people usually refer to file transfer you have to figure out is it inbound or are we talking about in this particular use case or is it outbound okay so you can configure these two here and then after that you can do the configuration steps of what that file name is and all that and then you know you, you can summarize it over there okay okay so the next one that we have uh, in our list is import file okay now um in um, in file transfer you saw that you know it has only the capability to move files from ftp folders to safe house and vice versa right the actual file data is not being read and pulled into marketing cloud right so that is only done by import file activity so this is also very important especially if you are you know looking at an exam perspective as well uh for those of you are preparing for exam so you, you sometimes like you know people get very confused between these activities like i was also confused a long time back when i was reading all these what is file transfer what is import file and all that right so file transfer does not have the capability to you know pull the data from within the file into marketing cloud it is only for moving files to and fro okay the actual uh, like you know reading of a file data and then importing that into marketing cloud is done by the import file activity okay and there are two options that you can use for import file activity this is also very important usually people don't like you know give you this distinction okay uh, uh, the the most common that you will see is the file gets placed in uh, ftp folder uh, and then you use file transfer to bring it into safe house and then you use import activity to pull that particular file that is in safe house into marketing cloud okay now this i would say is only uh, required if the particular file that you're pulling from uh you know the ftp folder is either having a, a compression or an encryption okay meaning you either need to unzip or decrypt because import file cannot unzip or decrypt it okay it can only read the data so it it needs an actual uh, csv file or a text delimiter file okay so in which case uh, let's say if it was just file.csv there in in the uh, ftp folder i don't need to do that file transfer activity here i can directly go and you know pull that from ftp into marketing cloud okay so this option is also there so you need to uh, understand your use case very specifically like okay what are we talking about what is the file that we are looking into do we need to like you know decrypt do i need to like you know uh, unzip okay before i read the the data from that particular file okay so based on that you have to configure your activity okay and then um uh, what did i miss here let me just want to check if i covered everything on this one yeah i think it's about it uh yeah so you you have to like you know then specify uh the the um, um the the target where you are actually going to like you know pull the data from this particular file into marketing cloud okay you can either update it into a, a data extension or a, a subscriber list so both are possible like you know it's not like only for data extension you can bring in the data right for even for uh, list also you can bring it uh, you have the option to configure that when you are configuring the import file activity okay Um, okay so going back to our import file so i bring import file here if i create a new definition so i just have to like you know give a test import file name so here it will show you like you know all the different uh, like you know locations where can i pull the particular file from so most of the time like i showed it from option 1 you will actually choose safe house okay and then you will say what is the file pattern that i'm expecting like you know and and then based on that you can you can actually put in the file name here like you know order.csv or whatever that particular file name i'm looking for and then you will you will configure the the destination as well so if i just put in some order 
dot csv here just for the purposes so i can go and specify our data extension or a subscriber list here so either of these options i can choose and then do the mapping and then review it okay so all these options are possible through um, through this import file activity okay and then you have multiple things that you can configure here so in the in the actual youtube videos that are created you will see all of these options what we have talked about in detail okay okay so next one that we have in the list is data extract so data extract is the opposite of import okay so import is basically like you know you are moving data into marketing cloud from a file right uh, data extract is actually extracting the data from marketing cloud uh, from a data extension into a uh, a file into your safe house okay so you can go and say okay i want to extract the data from uh, from here like and move it into the the specific particular file and it will automatically be pushed into safe house you cannot push it directly to ftp it will go into safe house automatically okay and there are different types of data extract that you can do you can actually do a, a data extract with directly as a csv file you can do a custom d extract with zip automatically it will zip it for you and then uh, there are tracking extracts that you can do so tracking extracts is nothing but like you know if you are familiar with uh, like you know uh, even communications marketing communication that you sent out like emails and all that you want to know like how it did right so if there was any subscribes if there were bounces if there are clicks opens all those data that is called tracking extract okay so those data you can actually pull out and then you can actually get uh, monthly uh, rolling data like that you can pull that out okay and uh, you can you can get it as actual files it will actually zip it into a bunch of uh, excel files based on the whatever options that you have chosen you also have the uh, option for audit trail like you know, let's say let's an audit trail like you want to see audit logs and all that you can see that if somebody like especially this is very useful for admins like you know, they usually will do an extract once a month or something like that to check if there is any fraudulent activities and all that okay there are there are different other um, uh, options also within data extract uh, it's it's there's a bunch of things but i i not gone through all of them uh, in the youtube playlist i believe like few of them i have covered like you know, few of them are new which i have not tried yet probably like you know we can if you are interested you can try it out or you can check the documentation like on some of those if not we'll try to like you know um, answer offline like you know, if i can look into it okay but the common ones that you will usually use are these like you know most of the time you will actually extract a data from a data extension into a file um, and then tracking extract is very common like you know getting data across and then once it comes into safe house like i mentioned earlier once the data is in safe house moving it into ftp or an external folder is your file transfer move the file from safe house to an external folder that's what it does okay so most of the time that you see in here and in all most of these uh, workflows you will see like you know it is usually not just one activity stand alone right it's a combination of activities that is why this automation workflows are very useful but you need to know what combination to use which activity do i need to use first what is the next activity that i need to do are they parallel or are they sequential etc okay so that is why like you know understanding what each activity does and what are the dependencies is very important for you okay okay moving to here let me show you what data extract is so if i bring in similarly if you create a data extract as well uh you can you can actually like you know uh, look at these multiple options here so the one that i mentioned is data extract is directly with the csv file or you can do it with the zip uh there is few other options as well so there is this one file move and copy is like if you want to uh, like you know move a, a, a file on an ftp folder from one folder to another folder also so there are this particular data extract is not just for exporting data there is a bunch of things that you can do including like file conversions like you know, if you want to convert a file format that is on your ftp and or safe house this is pretty useful so it has a bunch of other things as well okay so you can you can check all those options uh, if required okay a rare use cases but sometimes like you know you if you have a particular use case that you think like you know you want to check you might want to check these options before you go do anything custom okay uh okay so moving to our next one that i had filter activity okay so the this one and the next one uh, sequel they are two segmentation related activities now what is segmentation uh, it is for those of you who are not familiar with that term it is nothing but getting a subset of data like you know usually it's like you know you have a, a bunch of like you know contact data that you want to like you know uh, target for marketing right Uh, and sometimes you have a huge set of data but you don't want to like you know market everyone you might want to like you know segment it for specific 
uh, you know uh, pro- profiles or based on some attribute you want to say only people in this particular region who have purchased something so you want to like you know get a subset of that particular data and you want to target them for marketing right so for that uh, you can have two ways to like you know do segmentation one is filter activity and one is uh sql queries okay now filter activity it actually relies on uh, a, something called as a data filter so that is something you need to create in email studio first okay it is not outside email studio so within email studio you have to go and create a data filter and you can create it for list as well as for a, a data extension okay so once you have that you can then use that in an automation like using the filter activity you can say use that particular data filter that we have created okay and then uh, run that automatically so what will happen is like you know next time like you know whenever you have scheduled this particular filter activity to happen uh, like run every time it will go filter the latest data from there using this particular data filter that you have configured and then write it into that particular target de or a list uh, the list when it gets filtered it becomes a group it's called a group actually okay uh, but uh, the first time that this runs okay uh, the good thing about filter activity is it will actually create the de for you okay so that is the good thing about uh the filter activity uh, uh whereas in sql queries like you'll see later you you it will not create it for you if it is not existing you have to go and create it first and then only you can actually configure that activity okay here in filter activity you don't have to create it you just give the name and any external key that you want it will create it for you and then next time it runs as part of the schedule it will just keep reusing that okay so that is very useful so you show you the filter activity here as well uh filter so as you can see here if i go create uh, in in this particular case uh, i have to choose a data filter so this data filter if i go into email here under email studio this is email studio you see under data filters i've created three data filters here two of them are data extension ones and one is on a subscriber list that's why it's called profile attributes profile attributes are only available on subscriber list so if it's on a list based filter it is it is called prof- it will show you the type as profile attributes if it's a de based or a data extension based filter it will show us data extension here right so what this means is this can only apply on a subscriber list okay and these two can apply only on a data extension okay and then uh, the the good thing about like you know using a uh, uh, a list uh, filter is you don't uh, you have the option to specify like you know the the source and the and the target okay because all the lists have the same structure and they will all have the same attribute so if i say like let's say there's the gender is a particular uh, or i will show you this one itself like no so this one is a filter that i created so in this particular case let me see what i put i put gender is male and email opt in is true okay so you will see here this particular filter is not for a one particular list okay whereas the data extension filter is actually for a specific Uh, data extension the source is always going to be the constant okay in in uh, list one the the particular filter is is like you know you can apply that to any list that you want and it'll automatically if you say okay i want to always create a, a group for that particular one automatically it will create it for you so that is the beauty of you know be reusing that particular filter for lists whereas in uh, data extension it is for a specific um, uh, data extension so you see here the source this is the data extension this filter will only apply to this particular data extension okay and then it will create another data extension once that filter is applied okay so if you go back here you will see i will be able to choose uh, the one that i want so if i want it for a data extension here it automatically show i have chosen the data extension filter if i chose the the the, the profile attribute one it will show that as well here then i can configure it and then uh, go ahead and run that after that okay okay moving to our second one and this is one that you will most of you will like end up using when if you are working in sfms okay so using this you can actually select data from one or more data extensions using a sql query okay and then you can push that particular resulting data whatever the data you get into an existing target de okay and like i said existing so you you it has to already be there you it will not create it for you okay and then uh, you have to ensure that you choose all the fields that you need that you know that you need to be added or updated into that target de okay you have the option like you can add you can uh, update or even override the data in the target de so that is one useful sometimes like you know you have the uh, you you want to like you know refresh a particular data extension every time the sql query runs meaning i don't want the old data to be there like you know let's say um, i'm using this particular target de for like you know finding out 
uh, who are the people who have birthdays today right so every day if this runs it will go and like you know query f- certain things over there based on some some profiles it will bring in and then put the people's for today's birthday tomorrow i don't want people who had their birthday yesterday i want for today right so it will wipe out everything i it will put in the new data for today right so that is one one example just i just thought of that example so that is one way maybe you can think about like you know how you want to like you know bring in refresh data every time it runs okay and uh, there is also something known as uh, data views okay so data views are um, system tables that uh, marketing cloud maintains okay and then you can query from there also and you can combine that with data extension or you can combine data views you can combine multiple ds using joins this if you know sql queries you can you can use the that particular format and then you can uh, you know uh, write your own queries with joins and all that and then get the data into the target d the main thing you need to know is whatever fields you are actually using need to ensure that particular fields and data types actually exist in the target de so your query the fields that you choose like in the select query it's always going to be a select query by the way you cannot do delete you cannot do insert update none of those will work only select queries okay and then you can get that data and then it will be pushed into the target de okay and then again one very important thing this does not work with subscriber list okay it only works with data extensions okay so if anybody asks like you know, okay i have Um, a particular segmentation that i need to do uh, automated and if the the source is actually a subscriber list you cannot use query activities you have to use filter okay uh, if you if you want to use query activities it has to be a data extension so don't forget that part okay so let me bring in our So uh, one quick question here, Shivu, uh, from yeah. my side. Yeah. Uh, if you want to query on all subscriber list, can we do that? Uh, no, that is not a data extension. I think we can use the data views, right? Yeah. So that will be there. So if I I was going to show you the data views here, so there is something called uh, subscriber here. Where did that go? Here. so the data view is called subscriber so that will have the list of all the subscribers that you have uh, like you know and you can go and based on filters you can get all these fields okay and then there is the if you the data views are very very useful because it has like you know li- things that are not uh, like you know very evident in our de so some some data that is related on the subscriber side you will get the tracking data you will get subscriber data you will get journey data uh, sms email all the jobs that you have sent all those data you can actually get from here okay so list subscribers and all that so but you have to combine search some of these to like you know get get uh, specific uh, data that you're looking for and they have given some sample queries here which is very very useful like for instance if i want to like you know find the subscriber status or opens in the last 30 days and even within that if you go down it will show you like what if i want to modify this for like clicks okay they will tell you for click if you want to modify this particular query change the query here so you need to like you know know how to like you know um, first of all understand sql queries and once you know once you know that uh, see and play around with this some of these queries to see that okay so every uh, data view it is usually like you know having an underscore in that particular name most of it i think it is like a leading underscore i don't know if there is one with a trailing one but yeah i have seen most of them with a leading one so if you see like you know subscribers uh, like you know okay the subscribers one if i want to see the subscribers i have to go and click the subscribers data view and then see what are the fields so if i go to subscribers here these are the fields that i can query from the subscriber data view okay subscriber id like you know if if i want to know okay who are the subscribers who have like what is the status who is bounced or like you know who is actually like an you know, unsubscribed i can use this particular one as well okay mm-hmm. yep got it thank you so th- there is one more question from lakshmi she is asking uh, do we need to have a primary key in the data extension to be used in sql query not necessary okay uh, so if you have if you want to do uh, add uh, or update uh, it will actually look for that like appending and updating you it will ask for a primary key but for overwrite you don't need to okay so like you know otherwise it will not be able to see like okay if it's like it's a, what is the unique value to like check for an add or update like you know that is that is where it will it will ask you for that uh so let me show you how this query actually looks like so let me put some sample value here so this is how you will come in and then you can you can do your write your query here so 
one good thing about this ui is you can actually go and then you can see any um, data extension that you want you can if you want to select a specific field okay what happened to, oh, yeah oh, the fields are there just double click on that okay you want that particular field from that and if you want multiple from different ones you can go uh, you know select like this you can select but then make sure like you know you you specify which uh, table it is coming from so you, you will have to like you know put aliases and then put dot next to it otherwise it will be very confusing right because the same field can be there in multiple tables right uh, easier way to do it if i want all the data if i do like this okay it will just double click the the table it will give you everything okay and then you can do if you do a validate syntax it will tell you if there's an error okay so you have to make sure like you know it it follows the specific syntax okay so if i do like this from customer de and if i do validate syntax it should be green okay and then if i go in i can do a target data extension i can see what is the target and then here i can do append update or override right so override you probably won't need a primary key but the other two you probably it will actually look for a primary key i even tested it to see if it errors out but i've somewhere in before i've seen that there is a problem when it happens when you try to do without a, a primary key okay or a unique key actually yeah yeah so that is on the sql query part and then here again and on the query side you can even do like you know like i said uh, if you are looking at the data views so data views you will not see here you have to go and then you have to find out like you know, okay select subscriber id comma uh, you know email address comma subscriber key comma status from underscore subscribers so so here it's, it will show you here so underscore subscribers if you do like that then you will get the actual query here okay and then you do next and then you can use that for your uh, specific uh, query activity okay uh hello shubhu yes uh, Sa sagar here yeah uh, in, usually while using sql queries mostly we'll use uh, inner joins is there any uh, real time we are using another uh, joins if you if you want to use like left joins uh, if possible like sometimes you want to like you know have data in one on the left which is not there in the right uh, some some cases like that you can use that as well so um, remind me to like you know share the there was a couple of videos that Vlad had done on SQL deep dive. Um, it's there on my site as well. That uh, it's Marketing Cloud Basics um, where he's actually given very good explanation about how to use SQL joins. Um, I can probably share those two like you know, links to those videos so you can go through those same way with use cases that are there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Remind me towards the end, uh, Sagar. You know, so if I don't forget, I'll get that. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's move on with the interest. Uh, the next one, send email activity. Okay, so very, very straightforward. You can go ahead and then use this along with some of the other ones. Like, Or if you just want to like schedule an email, like, you know, I just want to send an email uh, to a set of people, like, you know, uh, every month. Okay, I just want to send a, uh, maybe a newsletter every month to, you know, people who have opted in. Okay, I can use this send email. I don't need to do any tracking or like you know, I don't want to send them on a different journey path and all that. Then you using that in automation studio is sufficient. You don't have to like you know go and create it in the journey itself. Like you know, so there are two options that you can send emails also. Okay. Similarly, there is also I think SMS and push also. Like you know, but send email is very common that that you can use as well. Okay. Uh, and how you configure that is uh, it is email send email. If you choose, you can go and you can go choose the email that you have configured and kept. Um, so I probably have a bunch of emails here. Let me see if I can find one. Okay. So abandoned cart not, but just maybe. So it will actually show you the, the email that I have actually created. I can create a particular uh, test email. Yeah. And then I can create the target, the exclusion, uh, if there's any advanced exclusion, all those. So I can use, you know, list and, you know, data extensions, whatever is required, I can I can use that over here, right? And then I can configure that. It's similar to like, you know, how you would configure a, a regular uh, email send in a journey as well. You can configure that over here and then you can schedule it. So um, most of the time, I don't expect you to do it on a file drop. Most of these, like, you know, it will be a actual schedule only. So you will say every maybe every week you want to send something or every month you want to send out something or maybe quarterly you want to send out something so you can you can use something like this okay 
Uh, okay, the last activity that I wanted to cover uh, in the common ones is script activity. So this is a programmer's you know go to uh, area. So uh, well, so any custom activity that you want to do, like you know, which is not available in any of those other activities, and which is something that you can actually do through SSGS because market, uh, script activity only supports SSGS server side JavaScript by the way. So uh, you you will be able to do it using script activity. Okay, so sometimes you want to do some logging or you want to do some some behind the scenes go and check some data and then you know put that data into another uh, data extension. So some complex operations that you want to do, even maybe do an API checking or something like that, and you know get some data. Maybe there are some coupon data in external in some system, and you want to go and get that data and refresh your your DE, right? All those things you can actually do through a script activity. You can schedule it. Okay, so. That one, let me go here. If I come here, uh, if I bring in script activity, I probably will show you an old one that I already created. So, uh, editor view. So, this is how it will look like. You know? So, you can actually have the script. So, you have to go and test it. You cannot test it over here. You probably have to test it out in a cloud page, a uh, landing page, or something like that, and then see if everything works. And then you can just copy paste it here, right? It will do validate syntax. Hopefully, there should not be any error if it's working in the other. Uh, in your actual cloud page as well okay and then you can uh, it uses ssgs uh, there is a workaround to use am script but i won't recommend using that a lot maybe very rare cases if you want to use something using pre-test content or something you can actually try that but yeah and uh, you can go uh, online and then you can see in, in your stack exchange how to use am script within a script activity or in ssgs okay okay so let me go and see what's next uh, all right so um, whatever we covered right now are like some of the common activities that you will end up working with in SFMC, okay? Um, and then all of these come together in that workflow that I showed you, like, you know, so you will be able to like, you know, sequence it. Like, you, know, you have to put it either in serial or in parallel. Um, the sequential activity should always be in serial. What it means is like, you know, it'll uh, the next activity will be dependent on the previous one. For in this particular case, you will see that there is two here in parallel. Okay, ignore the names for now because it doesn't make sense. I just simply dragged and dropped it in just to show you. What it means is if file transfer and this particular 1.1 and 1.2, they are actually in parallel. So this both will happen here, uh, like, you know, simultaneously. Okay. And then only then it will go to uh, step two. Okay. So if import file is actually like, you know, dependent on file transfer, and if I put it down here, then there'll be a problem. Okay. Import file will not be able to find that file. So Ideally, if you think this is going to be dependent on file transfer, always keep it sequential. If you think there are two activities that are totally independent and you, if you think they, they can run at the same time together, no problem, you can go ahead and put it in parallel. Rarely do I see that, but sometimes you may come across that, that you know, option that you may need to have like multiple things in parallel, you can do it, right? Most of the, your use cases will have like sequential ones as well, okay? So you can see here, like, you know, you have file transfer, then you can have the import file, then SQL queries, and then it'll be in, in serial. Okay, so if I go to our uh, instance here, let me go and show you maybe one or two examples. Uh, okay, I have one here that we have configured some time back. So here is one where it's like a schedule one that I've kept in a pause. So there is a file transfer that is actually bringing in a file from uh, an FTP, importing the data, we are actually doing a SQL query, and then we are actually filtering that particular data or refreshing that into a particular queue for, a, uh, for us to use. Okay, so if this particular all four are in, in, in sequence over here, like they're not in parallel, so one after the other, right? So this, if uh, if I go ahead and like make it active, it will, uh, based on the schedule, it will keep running, like you know, whenever I want to like you know, put it on the schedule. But if I keep it as paused, like so if I click on pause and it's on paused over here, you have this option called run once. Okay, so this is very useful, like you know, if you want to like you know, debug or like you, know, you want to like, maybe you're doing it for the first time, you're testing things out, you can click on run once, Okay, and then you can actually go and select each of these activities here, right? Okay, so if I click on select all activities, I can select all or uh, let me cancel. I want to like see the wait. Oh, okay, it's here only. Um, so if I want to like you know select only one activity from here, then I can go ahead and select that also. For instance, in this particular case, last time I ran this one, this particular one actually errored out. So maybe I'm debugging it right now. Okay. So I want to like, you know, go and find out, okay, what happened here? 
okay and then i like you know i can just debug that one alone and instead of the others running and then figure out what is happening maybe it was like a one time thing but then if it's keeping on failing i can go and check what happened and if i want to rerun it i can do that maybe after i fix it i can rerun it and see did it work if it if it turns green great then i can go and run the entire one or i can, i can go and activate it as well okay uh so let me cancel run once out of here so this one uh, if you do the run once i know it will fail so this is what you will see in the activity once you run it you will see that you know there will be an error here so if you go highlight over here guys can you go on mute if you're not speaking there is a lot of background noise but can you can you mute? yeah thanks so uh if you let me see if we can yeah if i highlight over here uh it will actually show you an error like you know okay what was the specific error uh, right now it's not coming up but this is because like you know the first activity was a file transfer activity and the file was not found okay so for some reason it's not coming up okay so uh, some cases the error is very uh, like you know uh, vague like you know like you know if it's uh, a file transfer and import file i found that errors are pretty good but for some of the other activities if there is any issue like especially in data extract and all uh it doesn't give you a good error date error message so you have no idea what happened and you have to go figure out like okay what is the issue okay but most of the time if it's a file based one like you know if you see the file is not exist or the file does not match or some some issue is there it will actually show you that error in the error message over here okay and then once you fix it you can go ahead and and rerun it okay there is another one that i have here which i have this one so this one actually worked so here i am doing a data extract and then i am doing file transfer and then Change, uh, you know, it's actually encrypting it, and then I'm actually doing a data extract with PGB to zip. This is the one I was mentioning earlier. Directly, I could not do a zip. I wanted to encrypt it, and then I wanted to zip it. Right? If I do the zip here, then I can directly do an. Uh, 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 I cannot encrypt that particular file, so that is the problem. So I wanted to like you know, encrypt the file in file transfer, and then do the zip. Okay. So this is the one workflow that I did for that. And if I do a run once, uh, I can go ahead. Uh, and then select all the activities and then do a run okay so it will say okay you have selected all these activities do you want to run this if you want to do that you can run you can even give an email um, like not uh, to say okay notify me when it completes and all that okay so here you go into your activities here after you do the run okay to see what is the status right you have to click refresh and it will take some time sometimes it is like you know pretty immediately you will see that particular uh, log coming in sometimes it takes maybe 5 10 minutes also depending upon how soon the 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 thread is free like you not know, to do the job okay it might be in the middle of something it will or maybe it runs every few minutes or something like that so i have i've sometimes waited for even 5 minutes for like you know a particular automation to kick so don't worry if you don't see it immediately but then after some time you will see like okay the the job has actually started okay uh okay i'll try to come back later on and then probably try to see that if it is there but let me see if there was anything else that i want to cover here uh yeah i think that was it for this one let me go back and check yeah probably like we can we can take a look at it later on if this particular new record comes in if it is actually being processed okay okay so going back to our uh, uh powerpoint um so you guys all have seen now like you know how automation studio works and like you know some of these common activities like you know that you have all learned okay and then uh, uh, but ideally like you know, nobody is come, going to come and tell you in real life okay do a file transfer activity or do the sql query activity or do this do that no okay you will always get a scenario like you know so your lead or your business team will come and tell you hey we need to do this particular you know uh, scenario here your use case go figure out how to do it that's all they will tell you then you have to sit and figure out okay how do i do this like you know do i do use automation studio or do i use journey builder or like do i use some other option or do i have to write custom you know some application for this so all these things will will you will you'll go crazy right so one you need you need to understand the building blocks whatever we went through you need to know in detail what is the capability in automation studio now that you have understood each of those blocks okay how do i put these things together okay so what i've done is i actually actually put in like five six scenarios here like you know just fictitious scenarios uh, i just took a day or something just to just write a few things so it not be it may not be entirely accurate but just to give you an idea okay so so don't hold me to it like you know that this is how you are going to solution exactly but i just want to make it interactive okay uh, you can unmute you can put it on chat i uh, can monitor there as well 
so i want you guys to like you know look at this scenario and then uh, walk me through like you know okay what are the various um, automation options that you can use to do this okay the first one there is a company called abc corp okay and they want to use marketing cloud to send a weekly promotion email to customers who purchase more than 250 dollars across one or more transactions in the last one week okay and this order history details are stored in an external system and they have options to send all the order details that records for the customers periodically through file exports okay so how will you solution this in marketing cloud so this is very common something that you may come across as well okay uh, some of you have probably have experience some of you don't but at least if you have been paying attention to today's session you should be able to like you know put together right so you some of you want to try this out anybody okay where will we start with finance file ftp file file transfer first okay so we have ftp all right so we said abc can give us the the file in ftp right but what what data are we going to ask for uh order history details okay so tell me so, like you know yeah yeah somebody else hey bro uh, this is vignesh ha ah. yeah so uh, the abc corps uh, have a i have to confirm some prerequisites here yeah. so the abc yeah. corps uh, have that order details order history hmm. details uh, whether it is uh, zipped or, or encrypted or it's in a csv format so if there is no there is no encryption or nothing we can directly import from a ftp correct they okay. have any encryption we have we need to do file transfer activity and then import those for data into okay. marketing marketing cloud uh, okay. into any data extension so after that uh, either we can uh, if directly uh, if they if we have a field call field called uh, is there any any purchase amount like thing like that thing we can do filter activity or hmm. we can simply do that in the query activity also we can okay. select those customers using query uh, putting a back condition uh, their purchase amount is more than 2000 uh, 250 dollars so after that uh, after the query activity we can uh, store it in a, any target data extension oh. and then we can send an email activity okay okay send an email to you like good and i see in chat also a number of you are somewhat uh, getting to the somewhat uh, similar uh, options okay so my question to you guys one more time again are you going to ask for all the order details from uh, abc corp every time i have one more question can we store the order details in marketing cloud system or not do we that have is, that permission that, that that is my question to you actually we can ask for weekly one no if not we have to make the api calls right from external no, no, system you 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 have data storage you have data extension that you can store data okay there is no harm in storing data then you can that is what that import data does right import file hmm. will will actually store the data in marketing cloud my question is okay uh, they have the option to send you all the order history order detail records are you going to ask for all, all the order details every week you would ask the last weeks only last weeks data only last 7 okay. days last 7 days okay and then so we will ask uh, sibu will ask the order so, details which has purchased more than dollar 250 on the weekly basis correct yeah why uh, because that is why uh, we need to send the weekly promotions right if the purchase is greater yeah that is uh, okay processing from our end also kind of yeah so one thing that uh, you know uh, you you guys should know uh, like you know the seniors will actually tell you like this uh, and a lot as well people who have experience on the platform uh, it is not written anywhere but marketing cloud is not supposed to be treated as a etl or a uh, warehouse okay preferably uh, because the you, you get charged for data storage and the number of contacts that you get and all that right so ideally don't try to bring in data if you don't want it okay you know we are used to the other way around from salesforce perspective we used to try to bring in as many data we do all the processing right 
if possible try to do as much processing outside marketing cloud and bring it in so it's simpler simpler for you so if you have the option always go and ask the customer can you send me order details for people who have purchased more than 250 okay then it's easy for you to look at the historical and then you can say okay or in the last one week and do that like no then that way the data that you are going to get every week is going to be a smaller subset otherwise what happens is it will send you one week data you still have to do an extra uh, like you know filtering and then the people who are purchased less than 250 is very less i mean it's like is is you're not going to do anything with that data right it's a waste for you you are wasting storage right so uh, let's say like you know you had 10000 people who ordered last one week of which only 300 people purchased more than 250 the remaining 9000 like 50 is like you know records your wasting space right so ideally don't don't bring in the data okay but the idea is is correct what were you guys said you get the file from ftp okay uh, like once you have figured that, that the exact data out okay and then you use import activity like i like i said you have to you have to have import without import it's not going to work okay and then uh, the best uh, or uh, best practice is always to ensure data is encrypted okay so i would say always you know keep it encrypted zip if required and then means you have to use file transfer okay and then use import activity okay and then you use send email because you finally need to send an email also right so send email is also required for that particular one okay okay scenario 2 now i want to extend one, one one more point in yeah. scenario 1 actually you said uh, like uh, where it will waste this storage data but until we send a mail that doesn't uh, take the storage data right here we only will take the data and create the data extensions by filtering activity even if you take the dump of uh, our no, no, i was not data. asking asking just about contact data alone contact count is different even your data storage in data extensions also act matters in the long run okay salesforce okay. doesn't tell you probably like okay there is you know x amount of gb of space that you can use but behind okay. the scenes it will have some limit okay you can ask your ae they will tell you there will probably be a limit they usually don't tell that much or publicize anywhere okay so the best practice is always not to use bring in data or even yeah. if you have brought in data later on if you don't need it archive it or move it out okay contact count is a different thing definitely like you said when you send email to a particular contact immediately it will be added into contact count if it is uh, like you know brought into a data extension it is not into all subscribers yet right uh, unless you bring it into a particular channel it will it will not show up but then uh, that also will you will have a count that one is like more visible like you know you probably have like you know okay 100000 contacts or 300000 contacts whatever is that particular um, whatever you paid for like you know that you it will get tracked and then you can ask your ai to pull a report of like you know how many contacts you can go delete contacts and all that right but then if these are order details these are rela- relational data that you are bringing in uh, initially when you are for a new org okay you, you might not find it okay yeah we have enough space don't have to worry but if you keep doing this for a while like you know after a number of years then it becomes a problem and nightmare to go and maintain this like who's going to go clean up unless you have retention if you have kept retention like you know to clean it up after like you know a few weeks or months that's okay no problem but i doubt people usually do that as well okay okay thank you thank you just sure sure hey shubha i have one question yes so when we are importing it to a one file here or like one de and filtering it out and target that de should be the same as like importing de can we use that like uh, sorry, we can okay. override that file right i i didn't i didn't uh, get that. just just uh, say that one more time so from the ftp we were importing the file to one d one data extension and then filtering it out using sql query or sql query or uh, filtering huh. then we were targeting it to one d that data after filtering huh. okay so can we use like for target and importing the same d can we use that as a same d for targeting for target and importing uh no because okay. there we have an option to override so, so, so whatever you imported is is let's say de1 okay yeah. that is your source after you apply filter like either filter or a sql query you are getting de2 okay you can yeah. send it directly to dm you can send email to de1 or de2 no problem but de1 will have more data de2 will have the subset data so you can choose which one but you cannot say Uh, you know do segmentation on de1 and write back into de1 that does not work it has to be a separate de okay 
source and target have to be separate okay thanks okay okay so same scenario as before okay now there is an extra condition okay so this time the customer is saying like you know if if a particular customer has already received a promotion email in the last 3 months i don't want this person to be uh, sent an email so uh, in this scenario we can data views hmm. data views can store up to 6 months of uh, data i think so Yes, so yeah. the last three months we can uh, pull it from the data views okay so what will you do to the previous one what will you add there uh, another filter condition on data view underscore send with filter condition or filter, filter condition or... data view sql query access through sql, SQL yeah uh-huh. so so you need to be very careful don't use the terms back and forth right? yeah right so i know you meant segmentation but yeah when you say filter it is different so use sql query activity right so if i right. go here you will insert that particular sql query here you will compare that with the data views and then do the once it is coming to the resulting target you can use that for your email okay so now you understood like you know how that scenario flows in right third deviation to this one we want to track if the user has opened the email and made any purchases using the promotional voucher within one month of being sent the email based on which we can send a reminder to use the voucher before it expires from the previous scenario yeah yeah same is sql query database. for opened mail yeah, yeah. sql query for open. okay but what if i have uh, i want to send a reminder email after that we have to use the wait wait activity okay you probably did not understand my question so some people may have opened some people may have not have opened people who have opened no problem they can go in a very different path people who have opened uh, not opened i want to send them the the reminder email sir in this case we have to use journey builder left okay okay yeah. so how do we bring yeah. journey builder into the question here can you so, use journey builder in automation studio no we no. have to store the data in data extension that data extension we have to call up in our journey builder correct okay. yeah so so people some some of you probably may not be familiar that's why i wanted to bring this scenario as well correctly said so after the sql whatever de that you are getting if that de gets configured in a journey as the entry source you will get the option here called fire event okay and then that hands it off to the journey okay so this is also a very uh, not very common but definitely something that you may come across quite a bit if you have worked a lot in marketing cloud as well okay can you right. tell us the fire event can you show uh, i don't have an example right now immediately but what happens is it's not an event that you can see directly um, in in this uh, so if i go to our here if i go to workflows what happens is after that particular um, uh, here like you know, when it goes into journey i don't know if i have an example that actually has transition to journeys let me see if i have to probably not here like you know so we yeah, have the bigger ones i have is like all examples that i showed you right now but uh, but just to give you an idea like you know so if it if it actually goes like this okay after it hands off like you know if i let's say this is filtering to a particular data extension right that data extension if i use in a journey right right now it will not show here like let's say i activate this uh, here right now the event will not show after i configure the automation i have to now go use this particular data extension in the journey as an entry source and when i'm configuring that in the journey in the entry source there will be an option saying in the journey okay use this automation like you know hand off from there then what when you do that automatically a new event will be added over here called fire entry event so meaning from here it will actually be saying like whatever the resulting from here it will pass to that journey it will see that happening if you have an org you should probably try that out but i i don't know if i have it in in any of the recordings that we had before but yeah it, it is something that you can see it uh, i think in in vlad's uh, in the foundation videos maybe probably i don't know if vlad has covered that as well but some of you if you have access to the org you can try that out it's a very it's a common use case that you will come across if you're using automation with uh, journey builder but that option is there right the only thing you have to ensure is the final de that you are actually like you know using in this automation the final target ensure that is becoming the entry source for your journey okay and then in the journey you have to configure 
okay you have to go and tell like you know when in the journey when you are conferring there is a source you you can say that this is coming from an automation if you don't say that it will not show it up here so that is the one step you need to like you know save in the journey after that you will see the fire event okay okay thank okay. you yeah scenario 4 this is a different one uh, so abc corp wants to get a weekly report of customers who have unsubscribed from marketing communications sent from marketing cloud to their customer mdm system okay they prefer to get a text delimited file with customer details and unsubscribe date options so first of all we have to ask whether they want into a, a secure ftp or something yeah as assume like you know that they are going to take it from our ftp our then, enhanced ftp then uh, they, we have to do a data extract and then we have to use file transfer activity Uh, yeah. whether they want to zip it or not that is other concern file tra- yeah so you do a data extract and then you do a file transfer to your ftp but ensure it is encrypted okay because it is customer data okay and so, then that goes to they will pick it up from the mdm system okay now the same scenario let's say mdm comes back and says okay we do not have file capability but we have rest api capability then what would you do api event script activity those activity we can uh, yeah ssjs we can call a http call uh, directly to mdm uh, right yeah. yeah yeah so so you will actually use apis from script activity you can so you don't need to do a sql activity or anything like because directly from within script activity you can you have uh, ssjs core functions which can which can retrieve data and then you can send it as an api provided the data is not too large like you no know, so i probably should have put that over there yeah uh, but if it's like very large you have to check those options as well like you no know, it will be script timeout errors and all that so you have to keep that in mind okay uh scenario 6 okay so when a file is processed by abc corp to pull data into marketing cloud like how we saw in scenario 1 the administrator also wants to ensure a log entry is added to a custom log d how do you do this so one send log option is there so in send log option we can be put check box so all the data will be ensured in the log entry send log is different uh, my friend like no that is when you are doing a send uh, if you have a data extension configured for that particular bu it will automatically be uh, dragged into send log this one is different this one basically i just want to like you no know, put in a custom entry into a de saying hey this particular automation kicked off at such and such time i just want to manual entry there that's all so when i whenever i want a custom thing like this to do what what activity do we use the keyword is custom what happened everyone this appeared hello through update activity no, i didn't cover anything called update activity you guys just said it earlier i think from sql only the casing sql joins or no sql does not do updates it only yeah. select hmm. right so so when i'm saying custom to do a custom task what do you use iron event it's a script, script activity ha huh. so use script activity right but now the question is i want to happen i want it to be done when a file is being processed how do you then file drop is the source right yeah so remember our scenario 1 oh oh ha ah. scenario 1 like you know the file is coming in from ftp we are actually after file transfer then what is happening import is happening import then sql send email all this is happening right so when that file transfer is happening i want that automation is kicking off right so that time i want uh, the the this log to be written into a de i just i like you said script activity okay we can write in script activity but then where would i put it okay so this is the use case where i said you can use serial and parallel okay till now we only saw serial right so what you can do is when you are actually having this uh, file transfer and the import and all in sequential 
with the file transfer you can have the script activity in parallel because it is an independent task okay this is just an example just to show you in an ideal life i don't think you will do it but just to give you an idea of like you know when you would do maybe parallel versus sequential okay so you have the option like you know if i write a script activity to say because it is not dependent on any of this steps here right when the file transfer kicks off automatically i can say hey go write this particular you know string into that particular de that's it any questions on this everybody is very confused or either they understood i i have experience i would get doubts but as i'm new to mc i'm not able to okay yeah i mean it's it's like i said so if this was the case here what i would do is i will just bring the script activity here that's it yes sir correct this will happen in sequence okay but then for file transfer when the file transfer is happening the script activity also will kick off so two activities will run parallelly that's what you are trying yes. to say right? yeah so this and this then only it will go into import file okay, okay. so when file yeah so it if i import file like this, this has nothing to do with this file transfer so they can run independently no problem but the later element is dependent on the combination of this result right uh, this one like, no no import file does not depend upon uh, script activity but it will wait till these are yeah. finished yeah depends means it will uh, kick off only once the parallel activity is finishes right correct hmm. okay that's why the numbering is also there but don't think like because 1.1 1.2 will run only after 1.1 these both will kick off parallelly got it oh. okay yeah that is something that i learned the hard way in the first time i tried it out long time back like i thought 1.1 means 1.2 means okay 1.2 will run only after 1.1 i was wondering why there is parallel and sequential right so, so parallel is like you know it will actual threading like you know it will it will run in parallel sequence only after the previous steps is completed okay step 2 will start only after step 1 is complete uh, should we if any error occur during the run running like any error in a file transfer or any script so it will be move to the next one or it will be stop like file transfer activity will be completed there will be some error in the script yeah it will it will it will it will stop any time there is an error in, in any of the activities you will see the issue like this it will stop there okay thanks okay yeah and then Uh, where you actually go and specify, you, you can actually go when you can specify an activity. You can go and give your email ID, yeah. okay, to let you know if there is any runtime error or like you know when the run come run is completed. This is where you go and give your email addresses, okay. If there is any issues like you no, know? so certain activities I think uh, there is like I think import and all uh, there is I think within the configuration you have the option to say skip. certain conditions if there is any problem with the file or something like that i think i don't recall but when you look at it later in the videos you will see there are certain configurations that you can do specifically within activities but in general if there is an error it will stop okay i think okay. it's verify activity right sorry i think that is the verify activity right where we can configure no 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 verify activity is different verification activity what it does is no oh, why is it not coming it put it in sequential yeah at the end maybe yeah sorry yeah sorry yeah so verification basically uh, you have to choose uh, either an uh, um, automate uh, and maybe and maybe i'll choose this one this particular data extension yeah, yeah you, you have to count of like you know is is or is not equal to or one of this and then you can say this is useful uh, uh, maybe one scenario that i can think of is let's say you are you are you know importing files every day from an external system okay and you never expect uh, you know maybe uh, the file that is coming in to be more than 1000 records at any point in time so it's a it may be a daily load that is coming in right but for some reason let's assume like you know somebody um, uh, like you know made a mistake on the uh, source system or something some error happened on the source system that is sending the file and somehow like you know almost uh, maybe 500000 records got you know pulled put into that particular file okay so um, you don't want those those this thing to be processed right you are expecting 1000 and you know 500000 came in right 
um so then that will be a problem right so you can actually in that particular case you can go and say if count is greater than 1000 okay okay you can say stop the automation because i don't want it to you know send out emails to 500000 people okay and then send me an email notification as well okay sometimes you can say okay i don't want to stop the automation it can happen but i want to go and investigate why it went very high that time you can just say like you know uh, just send the email notification but it, this is very useful in this particular cases like this like you know if you want to like you know verify certain cases and you want to you know, stop or email um, you know uh, based on a particular record count in an d i hope that helps yes so is like uh, gemini builder we are using threshold similar is it yeah something similar to that but threshold is not that on threshold is probably i thought that was for the Uh, the emails that are being sent in a particular throttling, throttling. throttling yeah throttling is different that is for the emails that are being sent this is more to do with the data in the in the data extension okay okay uh all right uh all right so this is the final one that i was saying uh let me give you the links for those who don't have it you put it in chat dun, dun, dun. there is 25 videos that i created some time back okay uh, but then uh, i am yet to add s3 s3 i i there was no do- good documentation i just got that from salesforce i didn't get a chance to like you know configure that on my end and see if it works i tried it out my own but it there were some problems it did not work properly so using s3 i haven't created any videos um but majority of what you actually we covered today and then most of the general use cases especially file workflows and all i have actually covered in the video so for you to get started and in working on automation studio this is more than enough like you know if you are doing it on a daily basis any advanced areas like you know sql queries and things like that we probably have to go and uh, you know get um, like you know either in stack exchange or maybe look at some of the community there are a few people who have written great blog like matthews has written a great uh, set of blogs on sql queries and all that so i usually sometimes even refer to you know those kind of blogs as well like you know to if i look at specific conditions like that uh okay let me bring up the video sources give me one second sagar i think you asked for this one right correct yeah uh let me see if i have that particular video one second um Yeah. Meanwhile, if you have any other questions, okay. I'm trying to find where are those. Like, Sagar, can you reach out to me later on? Like, and I basically it, it should be on. it's actually in in one of the links in here um like this is all the video resources i have collected i am trying to find what is the specific one that like you know it was actually a partner program one that vlad had done some time back uh, in which he had actually shown the two videos for sequels so i'm trying to see where that is uh yeah if i find that i will i will i will Yeah, you can share in the group. Yeah, it, it is. It is here. I just, I just got it. Okay. It is the optimized series. So this is the one uh, that is specifically there is two uh, videos on SQL, uh, intro to SQL, and one is the use cases and SQL best practices. It's actually pretty, almost I think two hours, very uh, core deep dive, um, like you know, very useful if you are like you know, going to work on SQL. I would say please go through those videos. all right uh that's basically what i had today uh yeah the questions guys okay here a lot of